During the 1850s, spiritualism became popular in America and Europe. Spiritualism was a religious movement that maintained that souls of the deceased continue to exist among us and have the power and desire to communicate with the living. It arrived in the United Kingdom from the United States in 1852 and quickly became popular among all classes of people. Artists, poets, writers, and other creatives frequently involved themselves in spiritualist and occult circles. Women in particular were practitioners of spiritualism, which saw relative gender inclusion for the time period. Through spiritualism, people began to look at myth in a different light. Symbols from ancient and pagan sources became reappropriated and re-sanctified through spiritualism and the occult. Some used the moon as a symbol of life, death, and rebirth. The Victorians understood the moon as female based on the myths of Artemis and Diana. The moon, in a spiritualist view, represented the liminal state between the physical and spiritual worlds. This concept was used by Evelyn de Morgan, a late 19th century painter, who used lunar and celestial images to convey spiritualist and feminist messages. De Morgan had knowledge of classical texts and myths like her male counterparts. She also had an understanding of science, particularly astronomy. By the time she was a young teenager, De Morgan began honing the skills of her craft. Her uncle, John Rodham Spencer Stanhope, a student of the Pre-Raphaelite painter Edward Burne Jones, influenced Evelyn's early artistic endeavors. Most of the women in her family were trained in leisure painting by Spencer Stanhope. De Morgan was no exception. After leaving art school and getting married to William de Morgan, Evelyn began to formally involve herself in spiritualism. Her formal introduction to spiritualism and spiritualist circles came from her mother-in-law, Sophia de Morgan. Sophia was a well-respected medium and published author. She wrote the book From Matter to Spirit, the result of 10 years experience in spirit manifestation in 1863 prior to Evelyn and William's marriage. Evelyn de Morgan's connection to spiritualism goes further than her relationship to her in-laws. She too published a book on her own practice, The Result of an Experiment, which was published in 1909. It contains transcripts from automatic writing sessions that Evelyn and William de Morgan began from their marriage to the year the book was published. Automatic writing or spirit writing is the process of writing unconsciously. It is considered a psychic ability used to channel spirits, angels, and other invisible entities. The de Morgans regularly spoke with angels and spirits during their sessions. Evelyn de Morgan's early career takes influence from Classicism and Pre-Raphaelitism. This stylistic choice was clearly influenced by Sir Edward Poynter, who was de Morgan's instructor at the Slade School of Fine Art. Even though de Morgan worked within a similar legacy of Poynter, her early work shows signs of her associations between women, divinity, and nature. Some of her earliest work conveys allegorical meanings predating her lunar and celestial paintings. Even as a young artist, de Morgan was breaking with mythic tradition and looking at female deities on their own. One of de Morgan's earliest celestial images, Night and Sleep, 1878, has clear influence from Pointer's teachings. Although the moon is not present in this painting, the astronomical imagery de Morgan uses contains early spiritual and allegorical meanings. De Morgan produced this painting after a series of initial trips to Italy. Before her marriage, Evelyn regularly traveled to Italy alone or with her uncle John Rodham Spencer Stanhope, who moved there in 1880. The painting's Italian influence is apparent, as it resembles a scene from Michelangelo's Sistine Chapel ceiling, The Creation of Adam, 1512, and Sandro Botticelli's The Birth of Venus, 1484-1486. Both artworks share similar forms to Night and Sleep. 
The ovular groupings of figures in the creation of Adam, along with the use of drapery, are similar. De Morgan saw the Sistine Chapel as a young woman and even sketched studies of the famous fresco. A surviving sketch depicting Adam was likely drawn from a book and not from real life. Regardless, De Morgan was interacting with forms from Michelangelo's work. The layout of the painting is far more reminiscent of Botticelli's Birth of Venus. In the upper left corner of the painting, Zephyr and Chloris glide in each other's arms as a combined entity. De Morgan's image mirrors this figure grouping, even including the falling flowers. De Morgan had access to this painting when she visited her uncle, who lived in Florence. Spencer Stanhope's villa was within walking distance of the Uffizi Gallery. Evelyn went there to sketch often, as evidenced by a watercolor study of Venus and Flora. In these early images, de Morgan is using imagery from Renaissance masters, which she will do for the rest of her career. This shows her attention to detail and her expertise in anatomy. Night and sleep reflects on the transition between day and night, a common theme in de Morgan's artwork. The concepts developed during her early career would dominate her later work. Themes such as death and rebirth and the transformation of the spiritual body became reoccurring motifs. These concepts link night and sleep to de Morgan's introduction to spiritualism, which occurred after the death of her father in 1876. After this point in time, Evelyn began to question the Christian concept of the afterlife. The theme of death and the afterlife appears in her artwork produced after this period. Even before her marriage to William de Morgan, whose mother was a spiritual medium, de Morgan was still interested in the concept of death, life, and rebirth. In Night and Sleep, two figures are linked together floating in the air. Set at dusk against a silver-blue sky, the female figure Knight leads her son, Sleep, to rest. The pair scatter poppy petals onto the mountainous landscape below them. Their tangled bodies, dreamy poses, and lidded eyes indicate narcosis. This is further evidenced by the presence of the poppies. Symbolically, poppies represent sleep and death, an ancient symbol often associated with night and the moon the Victorians also understood this in the context of laudanum. This opium-based pain reliever caused extreme drowsiness and often made the user fall asleep. Poppies often cause narcosis, which in terms of the painting seems to suggest a near-death sleep. Night appears to be carrying sleep to death, implying the passing from one plane to another. This concept becomes far less literal as de Morgan's career progressed. Evelyn de Morgan's later career shifted away from pre-Raphaelitism into the greater European movement of symbolism. The movement known as symbolism was a reaction to consumer and material culture. Symbolism began as a literary movement which sought to use metaphor to uncover the truths beyond the material world. The parallels between symbolist art and spiritualism are cotangent, as symbolism was a crossroads for believers of mysticism, spiritualism, and the occult. Playing into popular culture, many artists included themes and allegories relating to spiritualism, including personified representations of the lunar goddess. As had already been established during her early career, de Morgan's paintings fixated on the female body in line with her male equivalents at the time. Using allegory, de Morgan drew on mythological subject matter. Her artworks depended on metaphors to articulate both feminist and spiritualist themes. The result of an experiment coincides with de Morgan's later work, which seemed to directly use messaging found in her book. These subjects articulate themselves as elaborate images containing harmonious and dynamic color palettes. For de Morgan, the spirit world consisted of figures made of light. These celestial bodies, such as the moon, represent visible spiritualist concepts. Personifications reflect the concept of freedom and confinement, 
and power of lunar deities in three specific images, Luna, 1885, Sleeping Earth and Awakening Moon, 1905 to 1910, and Moonbeams Dipping into the Sea, 1900 to 1919. De Morgan's 1885 painting, Luna, depicts a personification of the moon as a beautiful strawberry blonde woman. The image contains feminist and spiritualist meanings through her symbolic use of imagery. The Roman lunar goddess is positioned within the curve of a waning moon. Her figure and positioning are similar to Michelangelo's dying slave, which de Morgan also sketched a picture of. Once again, she turns to Renaissance masters as sources for her figures. In constant round, Luna is bound to her job as the lunar goddess. Her control over the lunar cycle brings about the tides in the ocean below. Despite this control, she is weary. Luna is bound to her job. The ropes in the image reflect on her being bound to the cycle of the moon and therefore her role as the lunar goddess. These ideas also relate to the poem To the Moon by Percy by Shelley, which accompanied the painting when it was first displayed. In mysticism, the rope also represents destiny and fate. They also connect the idea of disconnecting the physical and spiritual body. This echoes the moon being bound to the Earth's orbit. They also may represent the restraints and limitations of educated women during the 19th century. This painting could also be self-reflective for de Morgan, who faced pushback from her family in pursuing a career in art. A similar theme to Luna appears in Sleeping Earth and Waking Moon, which shows the spiritual body, the moon, leaving the physical body, the earth. Again, de Morgan uses Michelangelo's dying slave as a reference for the figures. The allegory of the moon, which is a transparent figure, mirrors the earth, a dark, moody figure. The coloration and shadows of the two women display a difference in earthly and celestial bodies. Earth is trapped within a cliff of jagged rocks. Her drapery wraps around her, indicating she is bound to the physical world. Her mortal body is physically grounded. The moon, on the other hand, is moving upward. Her nude body seems to suggest an untethered freedom. This motif also connects to de Morgan's feminist arguments. The female body is literally freeing herself. This is unlike an image produced by Edward Pointer, her teacher, from roughly the same time period. Pointer's painting, The Vision of Endymion, 1902, contains similar thematic imagery as de Morgan's paintings. Both reflect on the dichotomy between celestial entities and earthly bodies. While there are similar concepts, Pointer's work is rooted in classical iconography that bounds Luna to an earthly male figure. In de Morgan's painting, Sleeping Earth and Waking Moon, a related narrative occurs, but this one removes Luna both physically and mythologically from the bounds of patriarchal control. Even though in myths, Selene or Luna has Endymion captured under her gaze, she is not in control. Artwork during this time period that depicted her often used misogyny. De Morgan uses this concept of duality in her own painting by replacing Endymion with a sleeping female earth and recontextualizing the meaning using spiritualist metaphor. The soul is physically removing itself from the body as if to suggest ascension. De Morgan's spiritualism arises most prominently in the painting Moonbeams Dipping into the Sea, 1900. This painting explicitly uses metaphor to illustrate the physical and spiritual planes using female figures. Moonbeams depicts water as a connection point between low, mortal, and high celestial life forms. The two planes of existence being linked together in a literal sense shows the relationship between the moon and earth, or perhaps in connection with Sophia de Morgan's book, Between Matter and Spirit. The link between water and the moon also has explicit connections to the oceans, tides, and cycles. Astrological sources link the moon with the zodiac sign Cancer, a water sign.
Both are associated with femininity. The concept of the ocean and the moon being linked is scientific, as the moon controls the tides. The idea also relates to the moon's cycle, which in turn connotes female menstruation. From a feminist perspective, De Morgan forms a robust female narrative. Her figures control their fate. This dismisses the myth that a woman's menstrual cycle is governed by the moon, which asserts that the female body is powerless. Rather, De Morgan's moon beams are young, powerful, and autonomous women. The three figures also seem to substitute the phases of the moon, waxing, birth, full, life, and waning, death. These beautiful red-haired goddesses dip into the sea, linked together by holding their hands. The background contains a vibrant pastel color palette. Under the light of the full moon, these women connect themselves with the celestial plane and the physical earthly plane. This metaphor is important in discussing Evelyn de Morgan's use of lunar symbolism. In a way, she is suggesting by using the female body and the moon in which it is associated to, that women are valid spiritual mediums and leaders within spiritualism and the realm of the occult. 